Resuming debate, the Honourable Parliamentary Secretary for Multiculturalism. Merci beaucoup, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Bill C-37. We have a national public health Canada crisis in Canada right now, Mr. Speaker. Last year, in British Columbia alone, more than 900 people died of a drug overdose, an increase of over 80 percent from the previous year. And the situation is getting worse. Deaths from drug overdoses, including fentanyl and carfentanyl, are now predicted to exceed deaths by car accidents. Thousands have died, and thousands more will continue to die unless we, as parliamentarians, take decisive action. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-37 represents decisive action. This bill will address our public health crisis and help save lives in a few important ways. It will simplify and streamline the application process for communities that wish to open a supervised consumption site to limit drug overdoses. It will put stronger measures in place to stop the flow of illegal drugs into our communities. Bill C-37 represents a vitally important step and necessary shift in the treatment of drug addiction from a framework of punishment and strict law enforcement practiced by the previous government to one focused on health care and one based on scientific evidence. I'm proud to support this bill on behalf of my constituents from Parkdale High Park. The care and compassion of the people in my community, coupled with their political engagement and depth of knowledge on these issues, has translated into overwhelming support for a shift in how we treat people experiencing drug addiction. My constituents want to see a federal government that responds to health crises, like the tragic deaths of thousands of Canadians from accidental opioid overdoses in 2016, with a compassionate strategy that is based on evidence, not with the knee-jerk ideological responses which characterize the previous government's zero-tolerance approach. Mr. Speaker, this past July in Toronto, the city where I live and serve the people of Parkdale High Park, our city council approved plans for three future safe consum consumption sites. In Toronto, there are already 50 such locations that offer harm reduction services and access to clean syringes and needles, including the Parkdale Community Health Centre and the Breakaway Addiction Services Satellite Clinic in my riding. Both of these organizations provide an invaluable service in my community. They help save lives in Parkdale High Park by treating addicts with care and compassion, not punishment and not stigma. Mr. Speaker, Bill C-37 would help by expanding the harm reduction network that already exists in our community and across the City of Toronto. I want to explore the idea of harm reduction a little bit more, Mr. Speaker. At its core, the principle of harm reduction is about taking a realistic approach to drug use and addiction and thinking practically and respectfully about the best options for treatment. As we all know in this chamber, drug addicts do not desire or choose to continue using substances that put them at risk of harm. Addiction is a brain disorder. It's not a choice. People experiencing addiction compulsively engage with rewarding stimuli despite the harm it does to their health, their relationships, and their very lives. While prevention and treatment are the central pillars of any drug strategy, we acknowledge on this side of the House the reality that people who are experiencing addiction will use drugs for a period of time until they are in treatment. Harm reduction strategies, Mr. Speaker, and treatment goals are not incompatible. To the contrary, contrary they are actually mutually reinforcing. Harm reduction strategies assist by helping to keep addicts alive and moving them toward treatment. Harm reduction strategies are the best alternative for people for whom prevention or criminal sanctions have not been effective. Harm reduction does not mean, Mr. Speaker, that we are giving up on these people or enabling them to use. Quite the opposite. Through harm reduction, we are refusing to give up on these very people. We are refusing to let them die. The contrast to harm reduction initiatives are the zero-tolerance policies favoured by the previous government. Zero-tolerance policies aimed at criminalizing addicts do not work. We have seen the negative effects of these strategies on marginalized communities, especially amongst those who are over-incarcerated, like the Indigenous community, the Black community. We have seen the negative stigma. We have seen misinformation based on anecdotes instead of scientific facts about drug addiction. And people who, who are suffering from a condition they cannot control are treated as criminals instead of patients. This is fundamentally the wrong approach, Mr. Speaker. By contrast, harm reduction serves not only individuals affected by their own addiction, it serves to help friends and families of addicts and society as a whole. When we stop pushing addicts out into streets, into alleyways, our communities become safer, Mr. Speaker. When we provide a safe space for consumption, equipped with medical professionals, parents of addicts don't have to bury their children. When we shift our narrative to focus on providing health care 
for Canadians afflicted with a difficult condition, our society as a whole begins to heal. This basic idea that harm reduction in the form of safe, supervised consumption sites can promote public health and safety was recognized by the Supreme Court in the Insight case. So, Mr. Speaker, with your indulgence, I'm going to put on my constitutional lawyer hat for a moment and discuss the Vancouver Safe Injection Site that was at issue in Insight. And I won't go into all the details as much as I'd love to, but it is important to note that, in short, the Supreme Court of Canada unanimously found in that case that the denial of a ministerial exemption by the previous government under the Controlled Drug and Substances Act was found by a unanimous court to be a violation of the Charter, specifically the Section 7 rights to life and security of the person of Insight's clients. The Supreme Court, by way of remedy, unilaterally reinstated the exemption, allowing Insight's doors to remain open so the facility could continue to prevent unnecessary deaths on Vancouver's downtown east side. The previous government's response to that decision, after uh, some neg negative reaction on the part of the previous government, they decided to ramp up the number of conditions that had been met in order that had to be met in order for supervised consumption sites to be permitted to operate. Mr. Speaker, you can't do through the back door what you're not permitted constitutionally to do th through the front door. The old B -Sil B Bill C2, which is c called, and we know there was a, a penchant for these, these catchy names, the Respect for Communities Act. Mr. Speaker, that was an ideological response, not one based on evidence. And it prompted observers like the HIV AIDS Legal Clinic Network to note, quote, Bill C2 imposed near insurmountable obstacles for supervised consumption services, such as Insight in Vancouver, despite the evidence of the benefits of these health interventions. Not only have safe supervised consumption sites been shown to save lives, they are also cost-effective, as revealed by the new study concluded by the Toronto-based St. Michael's Hospital. And if the members opposite want evidence of that study, I'm happy to provide it to them. Mr. Speaker, we have heard such critiques, and we have responded as a government. Through this bill, Bill C-37, our government is taking the number of criteria that must be met in order to open a supervised site from 26 conditions, which to my mind, Mr. Speaker, is not intensive community involvement. It is actually a barrier to providing authorization. And we've reduced it to five. And we didn't just dream up this list, Mr. Speaker. We're using the very five criteria that are entrenched in paragraph 153 of the Supreme Court's unanimous decision, lest we be accused of perhaps not taking community consultation seriously, as some of the members opposite have opined. Mr. Speaker, Bill C through Bill C-37, our government has responded to calls for a change in legislation from organizations and people on the front lines who care for and treat drug addicts, who see the negative impact of a system imbalanced between public safety and public health. Criticism of the bill has suggested that the government's new approach will turn society into an enabler of drug addiction as opposed to a preventer. On the contrary, Mr. Speaker, we will not stand idly by and enable Canadians to fatally overdose because we failed to act to provide them with safe spaces to receive health treatment. We will prevent more people from dying by shifting our approach from criminalization to treatment with compassion. While we are shifting our approach, we are not diminishing the ability of law enforcement and the criminal justice system to enforce the law. We are shifting the treatment of addicts from punishment to treatment by treating addiction as a health issue. Critics of the bill forget that we are also increasing law enforcement's ability to prevent illegal substances from making it into Canadian streets with changes to the Customs Act. Bill C-37 also further reinforces the commitment to consult with communities before making decisions that will directly impact them, such as the opening of a safe consumption site. Law enforcement, first responders, business owners, residents down the street will all be consulted before the Health Minister delivers an evidence-based decision. Mr. Speaker, this bill is not revolutionary. We heard this in, the, in some of the earlier speeches. There are already over 90 safe consumption sites operating effectively worldwide, including two sites right here in Canada. The Centre for Addiction and Mental Health has completed extensive research surrounding the effectiveness of harm reduction in collaboration with other pre prevention programs. They discuss drug addiction as a continuum where harm may occur, quote, at any level. Drug addiction, Mr. Speaker, is not black and white. It's not an all-or-nothing disease. If we continue to impose the rigid standards of Bill C-2 passed by the previous government, we will continue to deny communities and addicts the help, support and life-saving services they desperately deserve. Mr. Speaker, balancing public safety and public health is not easy, but I'm confident Bill C-37 will help do just that. I'm very proud to support legislation that puts the health and safety of Canadians at the forefront of our strategy, and I, all, I urge all members of the House to do the same. Merci beaucoup.